When you're playing on one string, hopefully you already know that you want the pick to stay as close as possible to the string between notes. You don't want it flopping around like this because that's wasteful motion. However, when you're doing string changes, sometimes the pick has to come outside the space of the strings. This is what many guitar players wrongly, in my opinion, call inside picking, where let's say you do a downstroke on the G string and an upstroke on the D string, go back and forth like this. If you think about it, the pick spends most of its time outside the strings because because that's the only way it can clear the string you just played and switch back and forth between notes. And when you're playing faster scale sequences in a solo, stuff like this, You've got a mixture of this. You've got a mixture of playing on one string where you want the pick as close as possible to the string, and you've got these string changes happening where sometimes the pick has to travel outside the space of the strings to get to the lower string or to get to the higher string, whatever the case is, and do that cleanly. And your job is, when you're practicing, is to become aware of which notes in the scale sequence are to be played in what way. Which notes you have to keep the pick as close as possible to the string, and for which notes the pick has to come outside the space of the strings. To help you isolate this mechanic, I've got this drill for you that sounds like this. You play the first four notes of the pattern with the pick as close as possible to the string, like this. But then on the fifth note that you do right before the string change, that's when the motion goes from a strict up and down to more of a down and away motion like this. So your pick clears the space of the strings and now has space to get to the D string and do an upstroke there. So all together, it looks like this. That is the picking mechanic you want to focus on as you play the first part of this pattern. But then there's one more note, the note on the D string, and you play that upstroke with an up and away motion. Because right after that upstroke, you're returning back to the G string. So you need to be aware of these nuances and pay attention to them as you repeat the lick over and over. So watch for these motions in my picking hand as I play this for you slow. Next step is to move this pattern up and down in the key of A minor. Sounds like this. And if you want more help with building your guitar speed, check out the link in the description of this video or go to the page on the screen right now. I'm going to show you a free one hour masterclass called Guitar Speed Formula. What it is, is a new way to build guitar speed without having to do the song and dance of starting slow and gradually build speed in small increments because that's a pretty boring way to practice and more importantly, doesn't work nearly as well as most people tell you that it does. If you want to know a new way to build speed, check out that link, enter your email address, I'll send you the video for free. As you work on building your speed, make sure to avoid these six common speed building mistakes because they can cause lifelong speed plateaus if you're not careful, but this video protects you against them.